like I said, we're going to do it backwards from the way I wrote it out. Uh, we're going to go over real quick the uh, foam rolling and the two sport athletes and just bear with me if you came here to see the baseball stuff. This all goes together, okay? Okay, you know what? I left my notes. Hang on. Okay, this all goes together. The main thing, it doesn't matter if you're here to learn about what your pitcher should do or if you've got a two-sport athlete that have, needs help with recovery, you need to understand this. This is, the, this is what basically we're all, this is what you need to understand to make things work to the best of your ability or to help your athlete recover the best. All right, so our muscles basically work like a really intricate cable system, all right? No matter where, which ones you're talking about. So imagine if you had a cable set, like this is one cable here, all right? And I can't really draw it to really show what I'm talking about because it wouldn't make sense and you'll, you'll see that as we go. But imagine these cables here, uh, you know, they're pulling, this cable is pulling this direction, all right? And this cable here is pulling down, right? Well, imagine like if these cables had to touch, like by the nature of the job they do, they had to touch at all times. They had to, they were like this basically, rubbing on against each other. That is how our muscles work inside of our bodies. And so if you had a cable system like that, what would you probably want to do? What's the one thing that you know you would need to keep adequately done to make sure those things, you know, uh, work properly or to the best of their ability? You want to keep them oiled or greased or lubricated or something. However you want to say, WD-40, whatever. Okay. So these recovery methods that we're using, foam rolling, all that stuff. Now I always panic that I'm not on camera. So let me look. Okay. So these recovery methods that we're using, uh, basically, in a uh, long story short, are uh, methods to make sure that our cable system are lubricated right here all right as the like i said i can't really draw it to demonstrate it you know because it would just it wouldn't look right it wouldn't you wouldn't be able you know it would just be one black line but basically like if these two cables are working alongside of each other and they have to rub against each other to work obviously you would want to have a really good lubrication system in place uh stress overworking Bad nutrition, poor sleep, and on and on and on and on cause these muscles to not glide well. So whether you're talking about post-throw recovery for your pitchers, whether you're talking about your volleyball players that are running track and they're they're playing ball, they're working out at school in their off-season workout program. Then they're going to track practice, and then some of them are even still trying to come up here, and then they're going to uh, their J.O. practice after that, and they're just completely wrecked. Their bodies are destroyed, you know? And, you know, like, there's this, there's this, uh, you know, we, we have this, this mindset that, that there's never too much work. You can never do too much, and that's just not the case. You have to take care of those muscles. We'll get into that in just a minute, but... Basically, you know, instead of just smashing them into the ground all the time, you know, I have parents come up here all the time and drop their kid off and they're like, no mercy, no mercy. I'm like, it doesn't really work that way. Like in the off season, we can annihilate them and that's okay, but we can't do it right now. We cannot do it. So they have to come up here and a lot of times they'll spend time on these uh, foam rollers and all that. And they are making these muscles glide better. You know, imagine if, if my hands were muscles right here, you can, you can hear that. That's probably what a lot of muscles, if we could hear them working, trying to work alongside of each other in there, that's probably what it would sound like when really it would need to sound more like stirring macaroni and cheese or something. You know, it needs to be lubricated to work pretty well in there. So that is why we foam roll. It's why we deep tissue massage. All that stuff that basically, you know, we'll take a baseball and put it on the wall and, uh, and use it to basically give ourselves a massage that's what we're trying to do to, to get those muscles gliding well, to get our muscle glide back. We want to enhance 
our muscle glide ability, I guess you'd say. That's what we're trying to do. So that's why your kid needs a foam roller and all that stuff. Now, uh, second part of this video for you pitchers, parents, baseball parents, and all that. And this really goes for fielders and there. I mean, if your kid has the potential of throwing a ball, which all nine are going to have that potential, this wouldn't be a bad idea. But a pitcher is guaranteed to throw the ball and the catcher really, but you know, the pitcher is guaranteed to throw the ball. A side note, this is just my, you know, I ponder stuff when, you know, I, I feel like this injury epidemic that we have in baseball, I feel like for the rest of eternity, we're gonna be chasing our tails around trying to find what's causing it because we're humans and we want a boogeyman and I don't think there is a particular one boogeyman but if there is one it's the only one we can't fix because it would mean we would have to stop playing baseball and that's the nature of the game you sit around you do nothing and then all of a sudden you're expected to go 100 miles an hour and I think that is the reason that there are so many epidemic or the for this injury epidemic and I mean, yeah, I realize that injury rates have gone up, but we're playing more baseball, you know, and, and then you have kids that are not throwing like they're supposed to and, you know, just on and on and on. But basically the body is, long story short, the body is the arm, the arm is not prepared. And that is the real reason, in my opinion, for most of your arm injuries. All right, so what can we do? All right. <clears throat> what we can do first off during the game, and I mean, most of y'all have a pretty good warm up. I'm a, I love extended warm ups, but I realize they don't happen. Uh, like I've said a million times, I don't care if you buy them from me, I don't care who you buy them from. Your kid needs to have a set of bands these EAP bands, you can get Jager bands, you can get them You can get them on Amazon. I think Easton makes some. You need to have ours sell for $25 a pair. And we have a little routine you can do. Ours is a little shorter than most of the routines you get because I just feel like you get better compliance when it's shorter. You can buy these bands, we got them in green too. Uh, and you need to like, it really just, if they will go through a little band circuit and then just start throwing, you know, maybe some jumping jacks or something, you know, a full body, just get a little sweat broken. That's a pretty good warm up. I mean, I could go on and on about what I would prefer for them to do to warm up, but I just, I know it's not happening. So uh, I'll leave that alone. Uh, so during the game, I think this is a part that we miss a lot and I don't, I'm totally unprepared. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get a ball. One of my favorite tools that we use are these two pound balls. You can go to Walmart and get them. They're about six bucks, five bucks, Gold's Gym. They're two pounds. These are so versatile, you can do anything with them. And I've had these things for about four years now and we have thrown them as hard as possible on the ground. We've banged them on the walls and we still to this day knock on wood have not broken one so and we've busted all of our expensive medicine balls time and time again but we've never busted one of these somehow or another and we throw these things as hard as we can against the wall and they still haven't busted so what can you do during the game and i realize your kid's not going to carry a, a shoulder tube that makes him look like a, a dork in the in the uh dugout he's not going to do a bunch of crazy stuff if you can get them to do anything to keep their arm just moving instead of sitting on the dugout and, or sitting on the bench screwing around. Just keep their arm moving and a little bit of blood in that arm, they'll be so much better off. So, during the game, I really feel like everybody needs to have a two pound ball in their bag. It's, it's so simple. You go to Walmart, you get one and keep it in your bag and then they can, you can do your post, your, you can do everything you need with it. So, I would suggest some upward tosses some shakes and some hammers if possible.
All right, and I'm saying like, I don't know, 20 of them each. All right, so the first one, upward tosses are literally upward tosses. Elbow stays up and it's not like they try to throw it through the roof. They just do this and this just keeps those, those muscles on the back of the arm and shoulder kind of hot. Just keep them loose and that way they're not sitting there doing nothing. All right. The main thing is tell them to keep their elbow up here. You want your elbow the height of your uh, armpit. Don't let it drop down. Think of this bicep right here as a rotisserie chicken. I heard Eric Cressy say that one time and that's perfect. You want it, this to be a rotisserie chicken right here. So it just rotates. It doesn't move up and down. All right. So one, two, three, four, just like that. Upward tosses, shakes. Uh, the younger kids, I tell them to pretend they've got a booger stuck on their finger. Sorry, but that's what we do. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just like that. And you're just keeping those muscles just loose. And I mean, your kid can literally invent whatever they want to do. Just move their arm around with and toss this ball around. They can throw it on the ground, just like that. Whatever they want to do. Uh, you know, just, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Just, you know, it doesn't have to be scientific. Just figure something out to keep their arm moving with a little bit of weight in it, all right? And they could do that with a baseball. It'd be better than nothing, but it just, these two pound balls are so good for that. All right, hammers. I'm not gonna mess with my uh, camera, but if you're in a dugout that has uh, center block, it's made of center blocks, obviously you can't do it if it's not a substantial wall. Hammers look like this. I'm not gonna do it on my whiteboard, but you take it and you literally hit it, hit the wall. Don't smash your thumb. You hit the wall as hard as you can with this ball. You know, like we do it on this wall, but, but we're not, I'm not gonna mess with my camera setup because it's kind of uh, it's in a it, if I if I touch it, it's gonna fall. So I don't have anything special for that. Alright, so that's during the game, and that will just keep new blood help the pitcher's arm to stay kind of loose and feel good and uh that will you know like that i feel like that will make a big difference especially in these early season games while it's still cold okay now this is the part that is super important okay maybe you can't talk your kid into doing this during the game fine the after the game if there is one thing that has to happen, it's this, all right? PTR, post throw recovery. Even if your kid does nothing to warm up, I would trade warm up time to make sure there's a post throw recovery. It's that important, all right? Because basically what you're doing is if you've heard the expression, putting your saddle up wet, that's basically what it is. Like you don't want to put your, mo like once your arm or any muscles, but once your muscles, your arm gets done doing something where it's been, uh, you know, where it's really worked really hard and uh, been kind of put through the ringer, you've got to cool it down. You've got to do some light exercises to kind of let it know that it's done with what it was doing, with, with the hard work it's been doing. All right, and there are a million things. I've got a video on here that we, it's, there's so many things that we do for post throw recovery. And it's honestly, it changes depending on the situation. Uh, you know, if nothing else, the bottom line, post throw recovery, like whenever your kid is not gonna throw a baseball anymore for that day, they pick up their two pound ball and they throw 30 times. That's their, that is the bottom line post throw recovery something in the opposite direction of all those throws that they made going this way just get their arm moving backwards that's all they gotta do if that's if that's all they will do fine uh, and, and obviously those right there are great you know I mean it's not like you 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 know it's basically we're keeping new blood if when you use these in between innings you're keeping new blood in here and uh, keeping the muscles nice and hot if you do this after the game, basically you're getting new blood in there to start the recovery process, all right? So that's basically what's going on. So you could use that right there as your post throw as well, you know? So it just, however you wanna do it. Again, those bands are perfect for post throw. You know, really you're, you can use these for post throw, you can use them for 
between innings to keep your arm loose so you can use them for warm-ups. It's all kind of prehab, you know, not rehab, but prehab type exercises, just light exercises to keep the arm hot and to get it warmed up and to cool it back down. It's all kind of the same exercises for the most part. There are a few exceptions. There are a couple of things that we do to kind of strengthen some band pull aparts and stuff like that. That's the other thing you can do with the bands that I really, really like that we use in the post throw that we don't always use in a warm up is we take the bands and you do band pull apart. So your arms go straight right here. You squeeze your shoulder blades together and just pull these. We do X's, so we go 10 here, 10 here. Make sure they're squeezing their shoulder blades together and letting them go apart. Just like that, and they're standing up straight. Don't let them put a big arch in their back. And then 10 here, just like that. It doesn't have to be really, really hard or heavy. Just something to keep their, uh, or to keep, just to strengthen those muscles on the back side of their body that have been working really, really hard to protect their arm all night while they were pitching. Okay, so post throw recovery, that and like I said, I've got a video that's strictly all post throw recovery things and I'm gonna do a video on our uh, circuit that we use for the band soon. And so you can get into that and uh, use whatever of it you wanna use and discard the rest. So, all right, so what else post throw? Uh, oh, and the other thing that I forgot to mention during the game, arm sleeves. I know parents roll their head, their eyes some at, at arm sleeves, but believe it or not, these things really help with recovery. Uh, and to keep the arm kind of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good information coming out uh, that says that these, you know, keeping that muscle nice and tight uh, is helping with uh, kind of, I don't know about preventing injuries, but actually it's not a bad idea to wear while they're pitching, but really the best benefit of that arm sleeve actually comes after they throw. But the kid, if, if you get them an arm sleeve, they're gonna wanna wear it during the game. So, unless the coach won't let them. So, they wear that. If it's really hot and they sweat it a bunch, you probably wanna have two because I would highly, highly suggest them keeping that arm sleeve on uh, for the rest of the night and even sleeping in it if possible. So, that, uh, I would keep that arm sleeve on as long as possible. If it's July and they don't have another one, obviously they're not gonna wanna sleep in it or you're not gonna let them sleep in it. But uh, you know, if you have another one that's clean, they can put on the sleep in it, that would be awesome. It'll help. You know, It's just a bunch of little things that you're trying to do to help their arm recover, okay? Uh, ice, I get a lot of questions about ice. There is research. There is research that says it's good. There are research that says it's useless. Uh, I don't, I've never heard of anybody saying that it's detrimental. If you like it, if your kid likes it, then do it. If it helps, whether it's a placebo effect, it still helps, it doesn't matter, okay? Uh, I don't care either way. I don't, I don't, I really don't know that it has that much of a, I feel like a total body ice bath will do a lot more good uh, I'm not really sure how much ice really will do, but if, uh, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the leading, I'm not the expert on that, you know, so uh, I don't feel like it's a big, put it this way, I don't feel like it's a big deal if you don't get around to icing. If you can do the arm sleeve, I would definitely say the post throw recovery is way more important than icing is, way more, all right? And the arm sleeve uh, is probably equally as important. Uh, so, and then the ice is like, if you have it and you want to use it, fine, but don't like put yourself in a huge bind trying to get ice on your kid's arm and think it's going to fall off if you don't. It's really not that big of a deal, okay? All right, next day, let me see if I missed anything. Arm sleeve. Oh, yeah, and I had a side note here. Just remember that, uh, let me make sure I see that. Yes, I know my battery's low. Remember that there is a... 24 hour rule for uh, just keep in mind the 24 hour rule, I guess I'll say. If your kid throws over 24 hour or 24 pitches in a game, they need 24 hours to recover. If they throw 12 pitches in a game, they're probably fine in a couple hours. And this is more towards your older kids. 
I'd be a little bit more conservative with your young, young kids, you know, but like it, I, I really don't feel like, I feel like the pendulum, when everybody got freaked out about the, the injuries, myself included, and the pitch smart pitch counts and all that stuff came out, the pendulum, you know, we were over here with kids throwing every day, all day. And the, uh, when we started figuring out that kids were getting hurt at, a, at an alarming rate, the pendulum slung all the way back over here, and that's when Pitch Smart came out. I, Pitch Smart definitely had, they have very good positive, uh, uh, you know, they had a, they meant well. Uh, I don't think it's, you know, especially for the older kids, it's definitely, it's too conservative. Uh, I, I don't feel like it's, maybe it's not too conservative, I just feel like it's, it's definitely not something, you know, you're, each individual kid is so much different, it's definitely not the law, it's not the Bible. All right, so the main thing is, if your kid throws over 24 pitches and say they get done at 6 p.m., uh, it they really don't need to pitch again until 6 p.m. the next day, okay? So, but if they are, you know, and this, this also goes back to how much they've been, been throwing and how good a shape their arm is in. There are some kids that have been in here or they've had a good throwing program they've been sticking to, and they, you know, their arms are ready. And if they go, they, they go out and they throw 22 pitches at, and they get done at 6 p.m. and they got another game tomorrow at noon, they're probably okay, assuming they're over like 13 or 14 years old, probably, you know, but I mean, it's just, it's so different individually. So uh, just, you know, let them, you, you know, watch their face. If they're wincing when they're throwing, it's obviously, you know, uh, they they don't, it's, it's, they don't need to pitch the next day, but just, that's an easy rule to remember. Try to keep that in mind, you know, like it's more for like the kids that throw 40 pitches and then they're trying to pitch the next day, it's not happening. Like, forget about it, okay? So keep that in mind when they're going in that, you know, if uh, they're going in and it's the third inning and they're one of the better pitchers and it's probably, you know, say it's Saturday and y'all are trying to play Sunday, if you think that they may try to get be used again on Sunday, like you need to say something or there needs to be a plan in place to keep them under 24 pitches if you're gonna need them again tomorrow, okay? so. There's that, just be careful with that. Keep that in mind, and that's just kind of a starting point. It's not, like I said, it's not gospel. Just use that to the best uh, that you can. All right, after they throw, the next day. What do they do? So we got during the game, we got after the game, next day. First off, they need to throw. And I know some of y'all just gasped. <laughs> Throw? What? Yes, they need to throw. Why? First off, they don't need to go out and pitch. They need to throw. They need to play light catch for about 10 minutes, maybe 60 feet, 70 feet, putting it on an arch. They need to play just, just a little bit. They need to, like every kid that pitches walks in here the next day and goes, I don't need to throw, my arm hurts. And I'm like, your arm doesn't hurt, it's sore. There's, you know, it, you're not hurt. There's a difference between soreness and injury, all right? And they need to learn that. They have to figure that out because their arm's gonna be sore. It, that's the only way muscles get sore when they're growing. It's just the way it is. So they have to learn the difference between soreness and injury. That is huge. So it's okay for them to go throw. Just they can't, they don't need to be putting anything on the line. Don't throw anything on the rope. They need to go out and just play light catch for about 10 minutes and, uh, and call it good, all right? They need to do another, like they need to do some band work. They need to do some, uh, some they could even do this again, the two pound ball, whatever tools you have at your disposal, they need to use them. They need to get, again, and that take, taking a baseball, put it up against the wall, or a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. Take it, put it up against the wall and roll all of this slippery on this whiteboard. Just basically give themselves a massage on their arm. And uh, you can also use those sticks. Any of these sticks that you can get at Academy are great. They'll have to get somebody to do it for them. You'll, you'll have to, the parent will have to do it for them. Just have them put their arm. I usually have them put their arm right here and I just, just sit here over and 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 just keep those things 
that's good for before the game too. That's a really good and after. I mean, that's another one of those things you can't do enough of. So uh, use those. I've used, uh, we have, the batteries are dead on this. I love these things to keep in their bag. Uh, this is a vibration tool. Like you just, it, the batteries in it, but they can keep this and sit there with it and just keep those muscles hot, all right? All of their throat, like on their throwing arm, that mine would be on this side, but just keep their muscles hot with this thing. They can use that. That's good to put the next day. You can see where I'm going, just trying to keep new blood, new rich blood with all the stuff, that, the oxygen and all that that we need to keep their uh, muscles recovering, right? Uh, we've also got used some of these things. That's kind of like a, a ball that rolls right there. You can massage with that. Just anything that you can do to kind of give a massage and move those muscles around in there a little bit. Uh, let's see. We also have this thing that most of y'all are not going to have, but it's pretty cool. We uh, you, you stick it on your leg like that, and you run your arm through it like that. It's really good for forearm recovery and, and all that stuff. But most people aren't going to have that thing to use, but we have it up here if you need to come use it. Uh, where my pen go? So the next day they need to do another version of arm care or post throw recovery. Band pull aparts like I showed you earlier. Uh, and light catch play, they can do that. Uh, like I said, they can use that exact same routine up there. That's really good for them. And uh, what was it? There was one other thing. Oh, and then a light stretching routine. All right, so their legs and their hips, you know, everybody pays attention to the arm. Uh, the legs and the hips get as much work during, you know, when they're pitching as their as their uh, their arm. So if, unless your kid is one of those kids, it's like Gumby, all floppy, and they could they're almost double jointed, and they can take their, you know, they can take their fingers and bend them back and put them on their forearms and all that. You know, unless they're like that, then a light stretching routine would be really good for their entire body. You know, just any type of, you know, like light, very light yoga, something like that would be really really good. If they are one of those very flexible kids, then buy them a foam roller, have them foam roll uh, their entire body. Or foam roll. Hopefully that's on camera. I don't think it will be. But uh, whole body stretch, foam roll, or foam roll. Uh, so that's it. Hopefully if you guys have any questions, you will uh, ask. Hopefully, I'm sure I missed something that will spur more questions. Hopefully so. Uh, I'm gonna get a good shot so y'all can read through the notes here. And uh, that way you'll know, you can be able to kind of maybe screenshot uh, what the whiteboard says there. And uh, you can use that. Oh, and as I, like I always forget to do, my, uh, if you want to buy the book, let's see. Yeah. All right. So if you want to buy the book, Amazon, search your student athlete. Michael K. Richards. You search that on Amazon and my book will pop up. It is, uh, there's digital copies and there's a hard uh, paperback copy. You can get either one. There you go. I did my sales pitch. All right. Hope you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you Thursday for the next video. show you guys the YouTube guys this camera is pretty old and it for some reason doesn't give as wide of a angle so I was just gonna show you guys my messy notes 
and that at the bottom down there was supposed to say whole body stretch or foam roll but it looks like whole body stretch foam roll or but I was just running out of whiteboard so and like I said there's my book if you want to buy it if you don't that's okay too I'm not big sales pitch guy all right you guys have a great day